just in the back here of the garage. Um, I really should tidy it up, it's probably uh, quite a mess at the moment, but luckily you can't see what's down there where it really is a tip. Um, more importantly though is what's over there. This thing here, he says, trying to point at it without actually looking at it. The Z1000. Um, I've not got a problem with mine, but Bandit Nev has got a problem with one that he's been looking at. And one of the things he needs to do to see if he can solve this problem is to connect up a gizmo and see if he can find a fault code or not. Uh, one of his problems is he's not sure where to connect the, uh, the gizmo. So I thought I would show where you connect it and also show you how you can get fault codes without the Kawasaki, Kawasaki Diagnostic Connector. Um, I can't actually show you a fault code because luckily enough, there aren't any, unless one crops up halfway through this video, which I don't want to happen because that happening would be bad. So I thought I'd come out, try and shoot this video. This is actually the fourth time because I've been having all sorts of problems with my new phone, got one of these iPhone SEs and it's just been causing me hassle with the videos. Now that I've worked out that the uh, video from the front camera and the rear camera are actually different in format, uh, hopefully I've sorted it with a new version of Sony Movie Studio. So, rather than just carry on gabbing away on this, let's get that bike there, better pointing that time, show you how to get these uh, diagnostic codes and show you where that connector is. I actually started with the uh, Haynes manual looking for this, but the Haynes manual doesn't have that information in. But it's how I found out that you can actually get the diagnostic data without actually connecting something in some cases. So I'll show you that first, uh, just on the bike. It's quite neat that you can do this. All you need is your bike and your key. Pop the key in and turn it on. Now, if you've got a problem at this point, you would have an engine management light come on and it would also be saying to you FI on the screen. If you have got that situation, which, as I say, I can't actually demonstrate because I haven't got that problem. Um, what you do is you press your selector button, your function selector, until you get to your odometer. There you go. 15,000 miles. Not got very many in this year with this plumbing virus. Once you're on the odometer, press and hold the same button again. And in theory, and I say I've never seen it happen because I haven't got a problem, but in theory, once you've held that down for a couple of seconds, it puts the bike into dealer mode. And in dealer mode, if there are any faults, it shows them here. So you'll see a fault code appear. If there are more, more than one fault happening with your bike, then it'll cycle through those fault codes. And then you can refer back to the manual. So Nev, if that works for you, and you haven't got the fault codes to hand, give me a shout and I'll uh, give you the meaning of them fault codes. Now, if you can't get the information you need from that, you need to be under the seat to actually get to the connector. So again, key. And this time, I'm just gonna pop the seat off. And under here, I've got a puncture repair kit. But aside from the puncture repair kit, under here, you'll see, you've got these three kind of rectangular areas that could take cables, only one of them's in use. Got this kind of foam rectangle with two holes in, again, only one hole in use. But this connector here, according to the service manual, not the hands manual, is the immobiliser and the Kawasaki Diagnostic Connector. So it's a two-in-one thing, unless you haven't got an immobiliser, in which case it's just the Diagnostic Connector. Now I don't know if that's going to be a standard connector or not, or whether you're going to have to have a proper Kawasaki gizmo in order to uh, actually be able to read the codes off using that mechanism. So I guess the the uh, self-diagnosis through the bike is probably the best starting point. But failing that, that's your wire, Nev. So hopefully that's helpful to anybody who's got the same problem as Nev. Hopefully it's helpful to Nev. You can tell I've had Mrs C on the bike, can't you? So I'll wrap that one up. Thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe. And I'll talk to you all again soon. And I'll put my bike back together.